Ciao bambini! Hello kids! Today we will speak of Galileo Galilei. I'm sure you know Galileo Galilei was a very important mathematician, inventor and astronomer from Italy. He lived between the 15 and 1600s and he is especially known for his astronomical discoveries. You need to know that Galileo Galilei was the person that made the highest number of discoveries about our solar system. He started observing the moon, understanding the moon wasn't flat like the antique claimed, but was rough. It had mountains and craters and valleys. He observed the phases of the moon very well. And then he moved his attention to planet Venus and understood that he also went through phases. He observed the planet Saturn and noticed the rings around. He uh, observed Jupiter and found out that he had four satellites that he called the four moon of Jupiter. And he even noticed the Neptune very far away, even though he never published anything about this discovery. All of these discoveries were made possible thanks to his own invention, the telescope. If you want to see an original telescope by Galileo Galilei, you need to know to the Science Museum in Florence where they display this one. Um, item. Um, but the, the telescope was invented by Galileo when he was living in Venice. Indeed, you need to know that Galileo was born in Pisa. Pisa is located in Tuscany, over here. He studied in Florence and spent a long time in Florence. He was a professor of mathematics at the University hmm, uh, of this land. But at a certain point, 28 years old, he moved to a different state that was the state of Venice. Venice was a very free thinking place and the University of Venice is located not far from the coast in the city of Padova, which is still today a beautiful university city. It is in the 18 years that he spent in the land of Venice that he, that he was able to invent a telescope. You need to know that his first public presentation of the telescope was made nonetheless than in Piazza San Marco. In St. Mark Square, there is an enormous bell tower that originated as a watchtower and never stopped its original function, even though it was converted later into a bell tower. Uh, and it's exactly on the top of the bell tower in San Marco. Then in 1609, he experimented in public one of his first telescopes. The reason why he did that was to suggest that the Republic of Venice could buy the telescope for military purposes. Indeed, through the telescope, you could see the ships very far away coming closer to Venice he thought that that would be of great help for a city like Venice that had a lot of friends but also a lot of enemies. With this telescope, ships that were 10 miles away could see as if they were one mile away only. And even later he magnified much more these inventions. I would suggest that you read this book about Galileo Galilei if you're planning to come to Florence and Venice and visiting uh, his places. Hmm? Uh, Who was Galileo by Penguin Edition? It is written by Patricia Brennan Demuth and illustrated by John O'Brien. I will read a small section of it. When he was in Florence, Galileo uh, started having as a professor a uh, different approach. Uh, most professors uh, typically repeated what ancient Greeks, ancient Egyptians, um, 
in ancient populations, philosophers, astronomers, and so on, had claimed a long time before. Galileo instead had a new scientific approach. He observed the things. He loved the physics, the study of the world. He made experiments. This put him in trouble very many times. For example, Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher that lived 400 years before um, Christ. Said that the heavy objects fall faster than light ones. For almost 2,000 years, no one had ever doubted this. It seemed to make sense that a hammer would fall faster than a feather. But Galileo had noticed hailstones of varying sizes hit the ground at the same time. All objects fall at the same speed, he decided. There you see a picture of him observing hailstones. Other scholars scoffed at this notion. Who was Galileo to question Aristotle anyway? According to a famous story, Galileo decided to put his theory to the test. He led a group of professors to the top of the Leaning Tower, Pisa, that you might be visiting when you come to Italy. He brought along a 10-pound cannonball and a 1-pound lead ball. According to Aristotle, the cannonball should fall to the ground 10 times faster than the lighter ball. On a signal, the balls were both dropped from the tower. Both balls thudded to the ground at almost exactly the same moment. Air slowed down the lighter ball just a bit. It seemed that Galileo had proved his point, but some observers thought that Galileo had proved only one thing, he was a troublemaker. Galileo's students, however, liked their entertaining teacher. Most of his classes had standing room only. Professors sometimes came to his classes too, but they came to his school. This is a small interruption in the story and biography of Galileo in this book. Um, that's particularly interesting. Proving Galileo right. In 1972, two Apollo 15 astronauts, David Scott and Jim Irwin, landed on the moon. Unlike Earth, the moon has no air resistance. Scott dropped a hammer and a feather to see which one would fall faster. Each one hit the moon at exactly the same time. This was just what Galileo had predicted 370 years earlier. Astronaut Scott radioed to NASA. This proves that Mr. Galileo was correct. The moon test was broadcast live on TV and you can watch it online. Let's continue with the story of Galileo. In 1591, Galileo's three-year contract at the university was almost up. Knowing he was likely to lose his job, Galileo resigned. Uh, it was an awful time to be jobless. Galileo's father had died recently. Now his mother, two young sisters, and a brother needed him to support them. Where could he find work to take care of his family? Luckily, a new job came before too long. The University of Padua hired Galileo to teach mathematics. The pay was there better than at Pisa. Plus, the University of Padua was a free thinking place. It was a perfect fit for an independent and brilliant thinker. Galileo was so poor when he set off for Padua that he could not afford to ride by horse. He walked the whole way, 100 miles. There you see him walking to the city of Padua. Chapter 4 Happy Years. In old age, Galileo looked back on the time he spent at Padua as the happiest years of his life. He was 28 when he arrived there. Soon after, the University of Padua promoted Galileo to be the head of the math department. The post was for his for the next 18 years. Young noblemen from all over Europe flocked to the university to study. When they returned home, they brought a word of Galileo and his ideas. 
Galileo's reputation grew and grew. In Padua, he also attracted a lively circle of friends. They were the greatest minds of their time. The city of Venice was nearby. Galileo often rode the ferry there to spend the holidays. Venice was a charming city of canals. People got around by riding boats. The city's palaces housed the beautiful works of art. This is another small interruption uh, in the story of Galileo to remind you that Pisa and Florence were in a different state than Venice in the time of Galileo. Italy in Galileo's time. In the 1500s, Italy wasn't a single country as it is today. It was a group of city-states. Each city-state was made up of a capital city and smaller villages. Each state had its own ruler and government. Italy's three most important capital cities were Venice, Florence and Rome. Venice was a wealthy shipping city in northeast, northeast Italy. Rome was the capital of the powerful papal states, ruled by the Pope, head of the Catholic Church. Florence flowered during the Renaissance as a center of the arts. Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci both came from there. 